Hi, my name is Florian Kohler, also known as Venom, and today we're going to talk about breaking and racking strategy, advanced one. We're going to cover all the way from 8-ball, 9-ball, and 10-ball, how to break and how to rack. This first break is probably the most common one. It's, it's the one we use pretty much in tournaments and everywhere, simply because, I, in my opinion, it's the one you can control the most. So, what I'm going to try here is I'm going to shoot into the 13 from the cue ball out there, and I'm going to try to make the 14 out there or the 5 there. So, this sort of depends where you put your cue ball. I like to put my cue ball there, so usually the 14 has got a little more chance to go than the 5, but you know, it kind of depends. So, once you get that, you're going to have to put your cue ball a little bit on the side of the center. I go a ball and a half away, something like that and uh, you gotta use stop or you know a little follow but it's not really follow it's more just stop so the ball kind of jumps after impact and either hit this rail here and come back or either go straight back in the air and kind of stops in the middle you always want to have your cue ball sort of land in the middle of the table to give you the best statistic you know in order to make the next shot so i'm just going to try to make that second row ball here so probably the 14 on the left or the five on the right side There we go. So the balls are not going to go all the time exactly where you want it, but in this case, you know, we made the 14 exactly where I want it to go. Uh, we have the cue ball somewhere in the middle of the table. I probably got kicked at some point. It would have been better here, but you know, it's still acceptable. Uh, the rest of the ball in eight ball, it, there's so much contact. It's pretty random. I mean, you can announce a lot of, you know, four rails, two rails, but really, in my opinion, the only one you got to look at, the most important balls are those three up there. And if you can control that in your cue ball, you're in a great shape to run out. Here's another way to break in eight ball. So this time we're gonna break from the second ball, which is the two ball here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the cue ball pretty far on the left side. Usually I try to go as close as possible there, close to the rail as possible. Of course you can break from the other side, you know, but I like to break from the left side. Uh, the idea is to shoot into the two with bottom, a little left, usually to get the cue ball to go back. Uh, we're gonna try to make the wing ball here, which is the 11 here. So the draw is gonna help you push it because right now it's, you know, it's not lined up. So we're gonna try to push this ball, force it here. And uh, the problem with that break to me is that uh, it kind of leaves a lot of clusters. So because you can break them from the side, it's gonna move the balls back and forth. And they usually kind of land on one side of the table. And uh, so this could be good against some player. They run out a lot, and they're, but they're not so tactical. So if you like defensive shots, it's probably a great break for you. Uh, but if you don't, if you like you know, more space, kind of like me, i you know rather break from the first, uh, the first ball. I'm gonna demonstrate this break anyway, because I think it's great to have every possibility in your arsenal anyway. There we go. And that's how you break from the second ball. As you can see, there's a little more cluster here. Uh, for some reason, it kind of worked out pretty good in this case, but the problem I have with it is the cue ball, you kind of lose control. You don't really know where it's going to go. So anyway, that's one way to break. And uh, you know, like I say, it works pretty good against some op opponents. In this case, we're still breaking from the side of the table into the second ball. But instead of trying to make just the wing ball and, and kind of try to play a defensive rack, we're going to try to make the eight ball. Now, the thing is, if every ball is frozen to each other, you're not going to be able to do it. There's going to be a lot of kiss and it's a lot of luck. However, if there's a gap, in this case, the opposite side of the cue ball, which is right here, in between the 13 and the 8, you're going to be able to make the 8 ball in that side pocket. Now, the gap can be too big, it can be too small, it's got to be sort of small. But um, again, you know, think about all those pros when they're looking at the rack like this and going over and trying to find if there's gaps. It's not just a legend, it's not to intimidate the opponent, it's actually because it's a purpose and it's very useful for you to be able to analyze and see where you can go. In this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, break from the side into the seven, try to make the eight right there. There you go. And that's how you make the eight ball on the break by watching the gaps, so remember, it's not a legend when people go look, especially pros, when they look at, their, at the gaps, you know, there's a reason for it. And this is a perfect example. You can win the game, first shot, and that's just knowledge. We're uh, now playing nine balls. So the one is on top, the nine is in the middle right there. I like to break from the left side, pretty close to the rail out there. 
And uh, the idea here is to make what we call the wing ball, which is the eight ball. Now, as you can see, the eight ball is not quite lined up. So the idea behind it is to try to move that tangent to move it into that corner ball, that corner pocket here. And to do that, I'm gonna have to use a lot of bottom on the cue ball. Now doing so, you're gonna send your cue ball there and the cue ball is gonna go either here or even go one rail back here. That's sort of like a typical way to play position. Always remember, keep the cue ball in the middle of the table, gives you better odds to make the next ball. The next thing you can control in nine ball is the one ball because you're gonna hit on that side that one ball is gonna have a tendency to go here, and if it doesn't go in the pocket, it usually goes back towards this side of the table. So you can actually track it. You can track that one ball and that cue ball, so you leave yourself an easier shot right off the break. So I'm gonna to try to show you that now. Okay, so eight in the corner. Position with the cue ball and the one ball. Okay, so as you can see, I didn't really get lucky, but actually, I mean, I did get a really good break. My one ball was tracking towards there and my cue ball was gonna be here, which would have been my, exactly my, my, you know, my real shot here. However, I got a little kiss, but ended up being still a perfect shot. I mean, this is pretty much as easy as it gets. It's uh, almost missable of a table here to run out. As we saw in eight ball, gaps can make a significant change. So in nine ball, it's really important, especially. So. What I'm gonna look here is the gaps into the one and the five, the five and the eight, eight and six. So that's providing everything else here is tight. So whenever you hit a rack, it's usually, you know, same energy goes both sides. However, if there's gaps, this is gonna slow the transfer of energy, meaning the eight ball is gonna go lower down table, which is close to the short trail. So if you have a hard time making the wing ball, and it's always coming up, you know, long, I mean, high, that's gonna really help you because it naturally is gonna go towards the corner rather than too high. Now, reverse, if you're already making the eight ball really well in the corner, you might wanna switch back to the other side because if the gaps are there, you're probably gonna hit it too low. So again, you, you gotta always use the gaps to your advantage, and if you have a chance, always go look at the rack and kind of figure out what's the best option for you. One more thing. The bigger the gaps are, the lower the wing ball is gonna go. So naturally, to compensate, you're gonna have to move your cue ball towards the center of the, ball, of the table rather than the side. That's how you make the wing ball, even though there's gaps in the rack. Let's now talk about pattern racking. So I know it's front upon for some tournaments, a lot of tournaments actually, because you have to put the two ball in a certain spot. However, in my opinion, if you're a good player, you have to kind of know what it's about. And uh, you know, there's tournaments when it's racked you on with any order, so you really need to know. This is common knowledge that you have to identify either to play to your best or to identify if your opponent is you know, putting it on yourself. Uh, pattern racking means basically putting the ball in a certain order that it maximizes your chance to run out. In this case here, we're basically gonna play zone. So I'm gonna play the high zone, the middle zone, and the low zone. Low zone is where the nine ball is gonna be, high zone is where the one ball is gonna be, and then the middle balls are probably gonna be somewhere there. So if you look at the rack quickly here, we're gonna start with the one ball. So the one ball we know goes towards here, breaking from that side goes here, either go in the pocket or go somewhere on that side of the table. Now let's look at the two ball. Two ball, same thing, goes somewhere there, back there. So these two balls are already gonna be on this half of the table, which is the you know high spot of the table. Now the five ball, if you look at it, the natural tendency would be to go towards the middle zone here. One rail here, there. Of course, a lot of kick happens, so the five ball can move somewhere else. Eight balls already taken care of. That's the wing ball, always going there. The three ball is going three rail, long, short, long, towards there. So that takes care, one, two, three, into the high zone of the table. And if you make the one, you still have two and the three. So that's very important. Those are probably the most important balls. Now, we're gonna talk about those two. Obviously the nine ball, if it's racked well, is gonna stay in the middle. Six and seven are probably the ball they're gonna move the least. So you wanna leave them down there because it's the low zone. So you wanna have the seven and the six closer to your nine ball. So whenever you're at the end of the rack, you don't have to go back and forth and simply just do a little stop, stop, stop shot and then a nine ball. Uh, in my opinion, the biggest one that's a little complicated to predict is the four ball because that four ball is gonna go towards the short trail here and goes back usually up table. The thing is, However, there's a lot of kisses and stuff, so that four ball's got a lot of chances to be kissed somewhere here, there, there. However, because you already have the one, two, three in the high zone, even if you have to go down for the four, you know, it's not that bad of a deal. And if you're lucky, the four is gonna come somewhere pretty high too and stay in the middle of the table. And that's how you pretty much got the perfect pattern. So again, perfect pattern, one, two, three here, four, five there, six, seven, and nine ball towards there. Eight ball in the wing. And that's how you maximize your chance to run out.
Okay, so it didn't work as good as you know we expect, but however, we really have the low bowl in this side of the table and the high bowl in the other side of the table. So pretty much, you know, it, it's sort of what the best pattern racking could be like. I mean, this is an easy out, you know, two is there, three is there, four is there, five is there. And then all you gotta do is go down table, six in the middle, seven there, and nine at the bottom of the table. As good as you're gonna get. For this last part, we're gonna talk about the 10 ball break. 10 ball break is pretty simple. You're gonna have the cue ball toward the center, try to shoot into the one ball pretty full, and try to make either the two here or the three there. Um, the idea is because those balls are naturally coming short, you're gonna have to move more towards the center to bring them long to try to make them in the side pockets. The next thing in the 10 ball break is you have to give a little angle every time, so try to get that cue ball to kind of pop after the one ball impact so the balls can go under, the cue ball sort of jumps and stays somewhere in the middle of the table to give you the best chance for the next shot. So let's try this and let's try to make either the three or the two ball there. And there we go. That's a solid 10 ball break. Made the two ball in its side pocket. Oh, actually this one here. I got a shot on the one and my cue ball sort of jumps, stayed in the middle of the table. Can't ask for much more. Let's talk about the 10 ball pattern rack now. So this is what I call the offensive situation here. So obviously one in the top, 10 in the middle. Uh, I like to put four or five in the second row, but you can also alternate between two and three. Uh, in this case, so we're gonna try to make either four or five there. Uh, nine and eight have a tendency to stay at the bottom half of this table. 10 obviously gonna stay down. Now those are pretty predictable. Usually they go one rail, bank here, into that second half of the table, the first, you know, the first half here. And then six and seven, them it tends to go four rail bank all around the table and go back into the second half of the table. So ideally you're gonna get one, you know, two, three here, four, five either in there or sort of land there. And then the other high balls are gonna stay in this side of the table. And uh, that's pretty much to me the best pattern rack you can do as far as running out for 10 balls. So let's see what we can get here and let's see if this works. There we go, there you got it. Nearly the perfect 10 ball break. The one stayed low, the two stayed low, the four sort of in the middle of the table, and then the bottom was six, seven, eight towards this side of the table, so closer to the 10 ball. Uh, really can't do much better. To me, this is the best offensive pattern racking you can do in 10 ball. Now again, remember, every table plays a little different, so it's not uncommon you gotta switch some balls to get a little bit of a different reaction. There was 8-ball, 9-ball, and 10-ball breaking and racking secrets. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As usual, any question, please comment below. I'll try my best to answer. Uh, I want to thank Pooldog for making that happen. For all your pool and billionaire supplies, please check out Pooldog.com. Links in the description. And see you guys.